Hello, I am Gabriel Raymond, and this is my synthesis project. I will be doing a little voiceover for this while we look at the slides I have prepared to do a rough outline of my first semester as a college student. So first, let's talk about the three central pillars of honors, because like actual architectural pillars, these pillars form a vital foundation for any student's college career, especially those of the honors inclination. First, we have our academic and professional development pillar, which you know is the pretty obvious things like getting good grades, um, you know, internships, doing research, anything that you really need to further your college career. Next, we have health and well being, also pretty straightforward eating healthy and not getting distracted and tempted by all the delicious foods in Cather's dessert bar, getting exercise and, you know, emotional well-being as well. And then lastly, we have community awareness and global engagement, which I would, I would say is like um, going out and recycling, expanding your social sphere and meeting new people and just overall diversifying your, your horizons. Yeah. So out of all the pillars, I think that my perspective has changed the most on, I would say it was community awareness and global engagement because I don't think people are really aware of, of how a community really works and how it feels to be in a community until you leave one and join a new one. It's like being pulled out of a, out of a hot tub and being dumped into an ice cold pool. It's a very, it's a very strange and new experience. So for me personally, I lived in my hometown for all 18 years of my life before I came here and being dropped in a bigger city with tons of people I didn't know was, was very, very, very strange. And I hadn't really given a lot of thought to how important community and global engagement itself is. And coming to Lincoln and really meeting new people, discovering like our place in the, in the greater global picture really was a, a new and an educational experience for me. So I'd previously thought this wasn't that important, but now that I have matured a little more and expanded my horizons, I know just how really important community awareness and global engagement is to talk with people, meet new people, um, recycle, learn about other cultures, all, the, all those sorts of things, which kind of leads me into the first part of my beginning as a college student. So as you can see from the quotes on the screen, a lot of <laughs> a lot of people don't really know what to do with, with, right away when they join college. For me specifically, I was undecided as a major. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. And as you can see from our friend Pablo Escobar in those pictures on the left, I was just kind of like waiting for something to happen. And that's really, it's really a strange experience to to realize how how strange it feels to be independent, newly independent, like separated from your parents, because there's no one telling you what to do anymore. Like professors are very hands off in the way they teach. It's not like high school or sports where there's always one single person you telling you what to do. So at first it's a, it's a refreshing experience until you realize you don't really know what you want to do. And that's really where smart goals come in. Well, they, they help with it at least. So this, this baby bird here in this picture I've included is struggling. And clearly it's because he hasn't made any SMART goals. And <laughs> the actual importance of SMART goals, I think, is that they really establish how to, how to prepare a goal, not in like the proper way I'd say, but in a helpful and useful way. So some, some characteristics I learned from SMART goals and how that's going to help me apply them in the future is that it's very important to make independent and self-driven goals, which is something I also learned coming to college and having to basically decide what I want to do for myself instead of being told what to do. And another important um, quality of a SMART goal is to have it be quantifiable and achievable through standards. So if we wanted to improve this baby bird's goals, we would say instead of learning to fly, he needs to learn to flap, to jump out of the nest on his own, not needing his parent to push him out. Something shorter and achievable, like steps to a staircase. And then it, uh, the, the third attribute of SMART goals, I would say, is the satisfaction of a job well done, and then looking forward and making your next goal. So once you've climbed every step of that staircase, you can look, look down and you say, wow, I really went up all those stairs all by myself. And now you can look forward and say, well, which staircase will I conquer next? 
which kind of brings me to the middle part of my college career, the part where a lot of things kind of started to come together. From our friend, the study girl here, said, fine, I, I did a lot of studying. I went out and tried new things, like I went rock climbing, engaged in that community. It was quite fun. Um, found a new hobby, went to the war gaming club, met some cool people there, also in, engaged in that community as well. And also I attended a Husker Dialogues, even though I didn't really need to. And it was an interesting experience, very, very, um, some, met some very new perspectives there and kind of changed my way of thinking a little bit. And it just, I, I, the middle part of my college career was really just me settling in, becoming familiar with people around me, becoming familiar with my new self, the new, the new Gabe who was doing things on his own, trying new things, being an ex excellent student, spending lots of time studying and just enjoying that whole process, which brings me to challenge. So one of the challenges I really faced during the middle part of my college career was social interaction. And that's not a big surprise because for a lot of people, social interaction is hard to come by in, in the age of the pandemic, the age of social distancing, the age of the face mask, where you can't even really see people's faces. And actually a, a side effect of that is that one of my favorite things to do when I, need, when I meet new people is to see their face and to be amazed by how they look totally different from how I thought they would be. But the, the real challenge of getting social interaction is that it's, it's hard because I was always kind of a shy person. I'd never really had to go outside my circle in high school to meet new friends. And it was difficult for me to come to that realization that no new people are gonna really approach me. I'm gonna have to go out and make friends on my own. And it's still sort of ongoing process, you know, because when I, when I came to this realization, it was already midway through the semester and everybody had already established social circles, but I'm gonna come at it with a can-do attitude next semester. And I'm also going to, as well, continue trying up till the end, you know? And I think what, what that's really taught me about challenges is that it's, it's super important to always stay focused on a challenge, always stay focused and, and to not take failure to heart because what a failure really is, is an opportunity to look back and see how you did something wrong and to try again. And an, an important component of that is not giving up. No matter how many failures you get, no matter how many times you fall down that staircase, you can always say, hey, I could always give it another shot, might try something new. So that's another third component of really overcoming challenge, just knowing when one method isn't working and then trying another one. And speaking of challenges, I'd say that a major challenge is leadership. And especially as, as an honor student, leadership is important because Honor students are considered leaders on the campus. And I think that the best way to lead is by example. And this, this picture of the duck is really a poor example because she's leading them across a road full of cars. But in, in real life, college life, the best way to be a leader is to lead by example because it, it's, it's a kind of subtle, quiet leadership, not one that's where you're like holding up a side and shouting, hey, look at me, I'm a leader, do what I say, but more like, hey, look at this guy, he's doing his best, he's being a role model every day, he's helping people out when it's necessary, and he's striving to be his best self, and you know what, I think I, think I could do that too, if this guy can make it, I could make it too, and also it, something like leading by example in class, where you are in online classes and you turn off your camera, turn on your camera, I mean, turn on your microphone and become the first to speak up and others will follow your example. It's like that video we watched where the, the first follower isn't, is, is, is just as important as a leader because they're, they're following their example and they're showing others that, hey, this, this thing that they're doing, it's good. We should all do it. Which leads me to the end of my college career, which is a lie because I'm gonna be coming back next semester and I think that I've really come a long ways. I've decided on a major. I'm no longer undecided. I made a lot of new friends and I'm gonna try tons of new stuff next semester too. Like I'm gonna join a choir probably, hopefully, we'll see. I'm planning on doing it, but you know, the pandemic throws wrenches and everything. And yeah, I just, it's, it's been a crazy wild roller coaster. I'm looking forward to more. And after finals, it'd be nice to go home and take a little break, but I'm already planning ahead to coming back. And that brings me to the last section, surprises and future outlooks. So I think what surprised me most about my first semester 
is how self-driven I really had to become. It's, it's, it's strange because I, I had parents who always gave me clear goals to follow, things I should do, advice. And for the first time, I was on my own. And like this man looking in the mirror here, I really had to examine myself and my goals and what I wanted to do with my life. And I think I've, I've come to the conclusion that I'm comfortable with of what I want to do with my life. And I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that soon and doing that next semester. And I'm going to take this new outlook I've gained that really the only person who can do what I want is me. The only person who can ensure what I want happens is me. And the only person who can get that done is me. And I can't rely on other people to get what I done want to get what I wanted done. I can ask them for help, but the only person who's going to make what I want is going to be me. So I'm going to carry out the future outlook into my next semester. And hopefully I can have less of a rocky ride due to you know, discovering of the self. And also because of the pandemic situation, next semester will go a lot smoother. I've already got classes lined out and I'm just really excited to continue with honors and just, you know, just, um, see how life goes. Yeah. And that's the end of my synthesis project.